<gasps> Hi, it's Dandy3D back again <laughs> with another video. Uh, going over texturing this time. So I'm working on these trousers. Um, and I'm pretty much just going to walk through in this time lapse that I've kind of edited together how I approach it. Um, so what you'll see I do a lot is I do fill layers uh, and just kind of use the AO or the curvature map. So for example, you can see here, I'm just grabbing the AO, um, turning down the roughness. See, I'm grabbing the curvature here. I'm going to use myself a little levels mask just to pop out just the edges. Um, what I do then is add filters. I use a warp a lot especially on the, the curvature map, just to make it feel a bit less uniform. It doesn't have to be thing, anything too crazy, but just subtle enough that it makes it feel a lot less uniform. I turn down the uh, color a bit, turn up the roughness. You can see here it's quite wet compared to the actual material, which makes things just bump out a bit more on the edges. Uh, this is me adding the weave cloth. So I, I'm following a specific reference of material. So you can see here, it's this kind of like striped weave. Um, Again, with this kind of thing, you don't want it to be perfectly uniform. So again, your best friend will be the warp tool. So you'll see here, I am going to filters and adding the warp tool. Just making that subtle kind of wobble. And I'm messing with the, the different uh, parameters below to get the result I want. Then I'm messing with the roughness, making it a bit different compared to the base uh, color. Then I'm going to be adding a fill layer and some grunge. Uh, I'm going to use some spots here. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the actual uh, blend type that you'll see here. I'm going here and then changing that to multiply, just to give it those kind of bobbly effect. But it's just subtle enough where it doesn't feel too over the top. Yeah. Then I'm adding the color and I'm just turning it up a bit. So it's a bit lighter than the actual base cloth underneath. Calling that stripes. Okay. Oh, uh, Music change, cool. All right, so we're gonna add some spots now. This is, I love using this a lot. It's just pretty much just a bit of displacement. Um, all you have to do is just scale things up a bit, mess with the disorder, um, and you just get this nice effect. Oh, I'm going for filter. Oh, I'm doing some filters here. Oh, warp. Okay, adding a bit of warp there. Adding a fill lamb, I'm gonna add a grunge. Yes, same thing. Just to break things up a bit so it's not too uniform. Cool, cool. Then I'm probably gonna go to color here and just turn it down a bit so it's not too abrupt because at the moment it looks like a lot of snow. There you go, just a bit more gray. And I'm turning up the roughness so it's a bit more shiny compared to the base. Gonna call that light spots. Yeah. And we're gonna do the same thing where we're gonna do dark spots. Oh. Uh, a lot of the time, especially with cloth, I, I kind of just do light spots and dark spots just kind of together. Um, if anything, I, I should probably make like a smart material that just throws it on immediately because it always just creates a nice displacement in the in the color, which is always very nice. Um, See, so yeah, it's always good to use that. There's certain materials that don't need it, uh, but it comes in handy. Uh, you can see I've turned up the roughness. So it now sits a bit nicer on the base. I'm going to call that the cloth details. Ooh. Um, there's no reason to add underscore between spaces in, in words, but it just makes it look a bit more official, you know, it makes it look like you know what you're doing. Uh, at this point, really, you know, I could sit here and go through every step, but pretty much I'm just messing around with grunges and warps and, and different filters until I get the results I want. I think most of my, you know, texturing workflow is just fucking around with different filters <laughs> and different grunges uh, until I get the results I have. So you can see yeah, I'm just messing around with the grunge, adding in different uh, grunges on top of it using the multiply or the the different uh, blending uh, choices available just to get the results I want. So I'm just adding kind of a nice kind of lighter touch to it. Uh, with the material I'm going for, I'll see if I can find some, uh, some good reference images to put on screen. Um, but the main thing is it has this kind of dusty uh, effect to it, which is very nice. So you can see I'm trying to create that kind of like slight dust. See, I'm adding a curvature to to blend out the crevices. Very good. Okay. What am I doing now? Okay. Same thing. Turning off the curvature. So you, I don't really like using masks, smart masks, but sometimes it's just fun to throw them in, mess around with them. You can see here I'm just grabbing that, making a bit of a subtle adjustment to make it look like there's a bit of dirt on it. A very subtle bit of dirt. Uh, with a brown fill layer. What am 
I going to do this time? Whoa, am I going to do it? Oh, I'm going to do a cloth. Okay. Uh, so, this is going to add a bit of height. Uh, you could have probably done this in the ZBrush sculpt in the high poly, but if you just want that bit of oomph, uh, what I'm going to do here is just have the height. I'm just going to turn things down so it makes it look just a bit crimpled. Crinkled? Crimpled? Is that a word? Crimpled? Uh, I'm going to set it to a nice darker color, but have it quite subtle. Um, and it will just make things feel a bit more clothy. Uh, oh, I'm using AO now. Let's see what I do here. Oh, I should have prepared uh, what I was doing at each stage, uh, but I spent so long having to edit this all together. So fuck you. Uh, I didn't mean that. I don't. No, I didn't mean that. Uh, I love you guys. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just messing again with uh, AO. I will say a big thing I do is I'll do a big pass of lots of grunges and lots of different pieces and spots and stuff, and then I'll usually do like an AO pass just on top of it, just to kind of mend it all together you know just kind of all bring it all together uh you can see i'm adding some proper color displacement here now um so i like to add this kind of oh it's sped up that's cool uh a bit of darker tones at the bottom i do this a lot with clothing you see on the jacket as well um at the top that i've kind of had like a gradient of, of, of it getting darker near the bottom and not the edges uh, it just looks nice and it makes it feel a lot less flat yeah cool <laughs> okay uh, come on, Daniel. Next bit. Come on. Uh, oh, I'm adding some on the on the bottom. <laughs> Very good. All right, what am I going to do now? Let's do some lighten. So we've done darkens. Uh, now we're going to add some light. So again, with the reference of cloth that I'm doing, it has this very dusty feel to it. Where over time, when you've you've articulated in some areas of uh, of the the knee, it gets just kind of like stretched and dusty. I, I'll show you pictures uh, on screen, and I think I do actually show some reference images that I'm looking at for reference. Um, but yeah, you get that exact kind of effect. So what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm adding in a paint layer and then using the curvature, oh no sorry, the AO map, uh, and then messing with the blend to get this nice effect where the crevices are not affected by when I'm painting in. Uh, then I'm adding a levels just to kind of even it out. If you hold down alt as well, this is a nice trick, I do this a lot, hold down alt and click on your mask and you can get a better view of just seeing what your mask is actually doing. Um, so yeah, see so yeah, this is a, oh, sped up again. Woohoo! Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going in and pretty much just painting in the extra details. What's this now? What am I adding now? Oh, some more grunge. Who knew? Um, this one's quite nice. Quite a nice dusty effect. And again, I'm messing with the blend shape and the blend until I get what I want. So I come with darken which is kind of subtracting away from the mask to so get a nice effect on top. Very nice. I think our next song's coming up as well. What's the next song gonna be? I feel like I'm a radio host. Ooh, this song sucks. Okay, so um, <laughs> now you see I'm just kind of painting in the details again. Uh, lots of dusty edges, edge wear. Uh, I think edge wear is, is, is such an important thing to do um, with clothing. Just makes things look nicer. What am I doing here? I'm, I'm putting in a fill layer and I've used the AO map again just to get some details to pop out a bit more, which is nice. Very nice. Very cool. Very cool. Again, oh, this is where I'm really going for edge wear here. Uh, so I've used a grunge and I'm using the paint tool to, to actually paint back in the bits I've kind of blocked out. And you're getting this nice effect over it. See, I'm messing with the actual mask itself. Very nice. This is less of a tutorial and just me kind of talking over a time lapse. I'm realizing these, I'm not very good at tutorials. <laughs> um, yeah, I've darkened it so it's not too abrupt. You don't want it to be too aggressive, the, the edge wear, where it doesn't feel like it's a part of the material. Uh, oh, some roughness. Oh, this is a big one. I feel like, you know, I remember back uh, when I was first learning texturing, some people would say, if you can just make the roughness look good, that's all that counts really. Like color and all that kind of stuff comes secondary, which I think is a bit controversial. I think color goes a long way, but like if you can just make the roughness look good on a, on a texture, that goes a long way. So with this, all that's really happening is I'm just setting the rough all the way to white and just kind of creating these nice kind of rough effects um, of where pieces have been scuffed. I think with something like realism, roughness is something you really need to, to get right. Uh, I'm going to stop going on about roughness. I think you get the point. 
Yeah, so in, you can see here, uh, I'm using the mouse actually for this, so don't worry, you don't have to be a, a master of, of pen here. I'm just kind of dotting in these little kind of hero marks. I call them hero marks. These kind of points aren't that just aren't just a general fuzz. It's actually like specific bits of roughness that I've painted in, which goes a long way. It just makes things look a lot, a lot more unique and uh, nicer. There you go. I'm really bad at these videos, man. Oh, God. Do you know my big thing? Oh, this is a time lapse at this point uh, in this bit. I, I pretty much just want to focus on making as many videos as possible to get better at talking. <laughs> and I'm <laughs> I'm getting slightly better. I think if you look back at my older videos, I've gotten a bit better. Uh, but Jesus Christ, man, uh, I've got a long way to go. <laughs> so maybe I need to go to speeching, uh, speeching coast. Uh, wow, a speech coach. There we go. Uh, yeah, you see, uh, same thing again, a bit where I said about the AO where it just kind of wraps it all up. I've done all these different layers, all these different effects, and then I'm just kind of Building all off with a nice curvature map. Uh, just kind of all bring it together. I'm using a bit of a mask tool just to get some areas where I feel like the curvature is a bit too much. Because uh, we've already got quite a nice a, a bit of light and edge wear. Okay. I think I'm focusing mostly on the, the aggressive folds around the, the knees for the curvature. How are you guys doing? Is everyone doing well? Are you guys doing well? Mm. Oh, I I think I've mentioned I hit a thousand followers of uh, followers subscribers. Wow on YouTube. Uh, so that's really exciting um, I, I'm really oh back to roughness here. I'm doing the, the back of the the legs now You know, I've, I, I'm really really proud of myself and I'm proud of you guys for for, for watching and th I'm really thankful I'm not proud. I'm thankful uh, So and I, I really appreciate you guys watching Mm -mm. Also, uh, I've kind of realized what I want the Discord to be, uh, if you guys want to join as well, not to plug the Discord. Uh, oh, I'm in engine now. I will just tap this off by saying I, I want to use the Discord as a place to maybe, you know, brainstorm what tutorials you guys want to see. So if you want to join the Discord, I'll be doing every few days kind of a little poll to go over, you know, what my next tutorials will be. So that'd be cool. Uh, what am I doing here? Stitching. Oh, this is fun. Uh, man, I can explain like how to do stitching, but like, just like a reference, bro. It's not that hard. Just get use this one here. You'll see here. Yeah, that stitching tool. And just like mask in your fucking stitches. It's not that hard, bro. Yeah, I know. Cool. Right, now watch me do this for the next, I don't know how long this is. I think f two minutes of this. Um. Uh, man, I started going on a diet recently and Fucking Domino's Pizza keeps messaging me with really good deals on my phone, and it's fucking annoying me. Literally, like, before this, I barely ever get any messages, but the second I want to go on a diet... Oh, really quickly, I'm changing the stitching color to more of a, a darker color, so it's not as abrupt. I think subtle stitching goes a long way. Also, I'm duplicating the stitching, putting underneath, adding a blur. This is very specific. Going back to the color, turning everything off but the height, bringing it down so it creates this just subtle bit of indent. Yeah. Cool, and also send the, the color a bit darker. Awesome. Um, yeah, what was I saying? Yeah, d fuck Domino's, man. It's like they know that I want to go on a diet. It's really fucking annoying me. Uh, again, I'm adding a grunge, and I'm actually made, making some mud. So what I'm doing is I made a group, and I'm adding in just a bunch of... Literally, there's no rhyme or reason with it. Just go crazy with adding a, a fuck ton of different grunges on top of each other. Some spots. Uh, and then mask the actual group of those different layers. And just, you can then go crazy with painting in, which you'll see here, some mud, which looks really nice. Oh, there we go. Now time lapse. Um, but yeah, man, man, go on this fucking diet. It's really fun. And it makes me feel like I'm, I'm doing something uh, with my life. <laughs> but um, fuck, man, I really want a pizza. Uh, I don't know. If you guys have good tips on, on getting through diets without wanting to cry, please tell me. Oh, this song is juicy. Okay. Do you know? Do you know? Want to know how I pick my songs? I go onto this website called Epidemic Sound, where you can like get non-copyright music if you pay a subscription. Um, and then I, I literally just click the f first like five or six popular songs. Um, yeah. Not a lot of effort there. Oh, there you can say I'm in engine now. Whoa! I think we're done. Whoa! <laughs> Good job, guys. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Um, yeah. At this point, I think I'm just showing off. How it looks in engine. I'm using Sandbox, uh, the amazing project by Facepunch, uh, the project I'm working on. Uh, 
you know, that's one thing as well. I don't know if anyone here is specifically using Sandbox. I know a few of the people from the Sandbox community have moved over to my community uh, from there. So, you know, if you want any advice about just setting up materials or models in Sandbox, go for it. You know, but I know a lot of you guys Unity use Unity and Unreal and all that kind of stuff. So, oh, there we go. So, yeah, thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys have a lovely day. Um, and yeah, I hope this has been interesting or educational or anything. Uh, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.